Howdy folks, I'm Mark. I make stuff. And today we're talking about part 7 of our Swatchity Code Along series, Alerts. No social media site is complete without a notification system to keep users constantly informed about the performance of their posts. At the end of the day, this is the foundation of any social media experience. The brief but powerful dopamine hit that fools you into a belief in your own significance. Swatchity, of course, is no different. And today we're going to be adding a feature to display these alerts and keep our users happy and engaged. So, uh, in case you're new to this, you can click on that link in the upper right to learn more about what Swatchy is. It's a social media site where you can only post colors. So if you need more explanation than that, click on that link and you'll learn more. Let's take a look at the user story for part seven. SW007 alerts. When a user is logged in, they can view a list of alerts. If new alerts exist, a badge appears in the main nav near the alerts icon. Alerts contain a linked icon that can be clicked to send the user to the relevant URL. All of that to say, when we're on a Swatch detail page and someone replies to our Swatch as the author of the main Swatch, it will send us an alert. We went over the process for that last time. We're gonna briefly cover that again here. Uh, that will create an alert and that function will update our user record to contain the most recent alert that we have. If we log in and we have a new alert, we'll see that badge there. So we're gonna click on that because someone has replied to our swatch. We see them in green here because they're, they're new. Um, if they were not new, we would see them in gray. And if we click away, if we click to another part of the site, we'll see this badge go away. We don't want the badge to go away as soon as we hit the alerts page, we want it to go away when we click away from the alerts page. If I click on one of these links, it will take me to the relevant URL, meaning the Swatch detail page where the user replied to my post. So there are several ways that we can accomplish this. If each of these alerts required an action, like you have to sign a document, you have to approve something, something like that, it would make sense for each alert to have a flag like is red, and we would track that here, right? Individual ones we track. In this case, all we really need to know is, do we have alerts that are more recent than the last time the user came to this page? A far simpler approach and a, a far more lightweight approach that seemed appropriate for this use case. So let's take a look at the alert schema here in our Prisma schema file. Uh, we've seen this pattern before. We've got our ID with all this information, which is similar to what we used before. The alert type, Currently, we only have one type of alert. It's for a reply. Now, we could add other alerts down the road for different purposes, and that's what that's for. We have the, the user ID, that's who this alert is for. The link is the relevant URL. In this case, we'd be clicking through to the swatch detail page or the thread. The noun in this case refers to the user who replied to your swatch, so, right? One of these folks. Now, if we wanted to track these individually, we could have uh, a Boolean for is red or is new, um, but I didn't want to go that route. Instead, when we create a new reply, see our user meta for the author of the swatch that we're replying to, that user, we update their last alert value with the current date and time. That way, the next time they log in, they'll see that badge. So let's take a look at how we do that. In a previous session, we were taking a look at check user score, this function. This gets called at several points in the application. Um, every time the user score could change, that's for when we like or unlike a post, when we like or unlike a reply, when we create a reply, even when we create a post, we're updating the user's score and sometimes even their level if their level changes. One thing we've added is a third argument here that's optional called update last alert. So it's defaulting to false. So most of the time we don't actually include this at all, but for the create reply, we call this and we set this to true. As we're updating the user information, we say, hey, are we updating the last alert? Great, so we're gonna inject that value into this data object that we're using to update the user metadata with the last alert set to the current date and time. So that's how that works. And again, every other place we use this, we just say the user ID and we pass in the Prisma client. But in one case, and we'll show you that in a second, we set that to true. 
So it's right here in create reply, check user score after everything else is done. And we looked at that last time. After everything is done, we say check user score and we set this to true. So let's take a look at our alerts page. So that's what renders this page. As per usual, we're gonna start at the bottom of the page, right? We're gonna start with our get server side props. The only prop we're pulling in is initial alerts, right? We get that from our get alerts DB function. That's a server side function. Uh, this zero is for a skip for pagination later on. And then as with our other functions that include this kind of data that include dates, we're going to serialize these with a different version of that same type of function that we used earlier to serialize our swatches and user metadata. So let's take a look at get alerts DB. So get alerts DB, as mentioned, brings in the session and our skip. We are going to be returning an array of alert. And again, this alert type comes from our schema, right? Prisma does that for us. As we said, you know, if you deploy your schema using Prisma, it'll create those types for you. Just makes it a lot easier. It checks to make sure the user's really there. We find all of the alerts for this user where the user ID matches. And we uh, pull in using our skip and our take, which is the number of alerts per page, which comes in from a constants file. So that's really all that does. But what's nice is we're able to use this on the server side to pull in our get server side props, but then this is also made available in our API functions on the front end, on the client side, we can use this get alerts function, which will hit an API route. And this API route runs that same function. That's one of the really nice things about next. It allows us to reuse that code on the front end and the back end. It's, it's faster to develop because it's one set of tests to write. Let's go back to the page here. So we have our information, we're gonna pass that in as a prop. And again, we have initial alerts, which becomes the default for our alerts use state, right, an array of type alert. These three functions should look pretty familiar based on how we've handled swatches and replies, right? We can refresh our alerts just as we refresh the list of swatches and replies, right? Load more alerts, same, the same patterns are here, right? We're just using different data. And with our load alerts, we just grab all this. Of course, we check to see if the user's logged in. And then we get alerts, which we already looked at that, right? So get alerts comes from our API functions. It calls that API route that we looked at. Our API route calls our good old trusty get alerts DB function. So all of this should look familiar. All of this should seem pretty straightforward. Header buttons in this case is just one button for refresh because we wouldn't be creating a new alert, right? That's not logical. And our return, we, we wrap it with our layout as the way we do with every one of our pages. We have our title, we have our intro, just like everything else, it's all internationalized text. We have our alerts and we map through that with our alert post. And we're gonna go over that here in a moment, but I wanted to show you the other items here. Just like with the swatch feed and the various swatch feed pages, we have our skeleton, much like our post skeleton that shows the items as they're loading, like that. And if you're not logged in, it'll tell you you're not logged in. If you don't have any results, it'll tell you that too. And then we have our load more button, right? So if we loaded, if I kept hitting this enough, that wouldn't show up because our can load more use state Boolean would be set to false if we tried to load them and didn't load anymore. So let's take a look at the alert post. So alert post is fairly simple. We have some conditional classes here that allow us to change the styling depending on whether an alert is new or not. And we also, you can see, have a background for light mode and then dark dash is our prefix for our dark mode classes. We went over that earlier. And then we have our internationalized reply one and reply two. Why did we split that into two pieces? You might be asking. Um, especially since formatted message allows us to put in templates. So we could say, uh, we could send it our ID and then we could send this as a value. Yes, that's true, but I wanted this text to be made to be uppercase via CSS. And I also wanted it to be bold. And so it made sense to split it into two pieces. So we said, part one just says swatcher and then the username. And then part two is just replied to your swatch. And then we have the time since, which is the same component we use on our swatch posts. 
And so in this other flex column, we have our link that sends us to the relevant link that we talked about. And it wraps around an icon for the link. So let's go back to the alerts page. There's one more thing we need to talk about. And that is how we manage when we have this dot lighting up or not. Let's take a look at that. We can see here that in local storage, we have last alert view. And that last alert view is what's driving the logic for uh, not showing us the badge. So if we get rid of that, so if you have any alerts at all, they're going to be new according to the system because there was, there is no currently, no last view. And notice that it's not written as the page loads. It's only written when we, when we navigate away. And the reason we did it that way was I wanted this badge to remain here when you're on this page. And I wanted this styling to remain uh, in this mode until we click away, right? So here's how we do that. Normally, if I want something to load only once when you first load the page, you just give it a use effect and an empty dependency array. In this case, that didn't give me the effect that I wanted. So we kind of work around that with a page init use state Boolean, um, which we set, right? We set to true. And then, so we know that it's only run for once, but because of the way pages work in next, I wanted to make sure that we had that. Um, and then when we load it, we also check the last alert view. Then crucially, when we navigate away, see our return for our use effect, when we navigate away from this page, we're going to set our last alert view in our local storage. I'll show you. So we go to the home page, and that goes away. So and we see our, our item there. That gets and sets the local storage. And then in our main navigation, as we map through each of these icon links, we run a function called get item has dot for each of these items. And we, we pass in the string that describes the icon, right? So if we're looking at alerts and we're looking at messages, we're going to check when was the last time they viewed this. So we're seeing user meta last alert, meaning what is the, what is the date for the latest alert this person has. And then we check the uh, local storage for last alert view. When was the last time you viewed that page? This will calculate, do we have anything new? And if we have something new and we're on the alerts icon, return true. So spoiler alert, we do the same kind of logic for messages. So that's basically it. There are a couple of little bug fixes that we handle in later branches. For example, on this page, we should be seeing the bell highlighted and not the home. Uh, that's something we fixed in a later branch. You can see um, in production, you can see that it's really there. But um, that's all we have for now. Next up, we're going to be talking about messaging, how you can message other users with colors in Swatch. Hope to see you then.